listening to Inclusive AF with Jackie Clayton and Katie Van Horn. Hello, hello. This is Katie Van Horn. And this is Jackie Clayton. And I just was about to click leave meeting. <laughs> that one is going to, that was going to be don't helpful. Do that. Don't do that today. Maybe tomorrow. Um, I think got it. 11 meetings today, Jackie. How many meetings do you have today? I have had six meetings today. Six so far. Okay, good. Yeah, I have two more after this. Um, so, you know, it's good stuff. So this is the Inclusive AF Podcast, and Jackie and I have a lot going on, but we love you and want to be here. Jackie, your glasses, I don't know if I'm, I, they look crooked. I don't. They're probably crooked. They might be crooked. My headphones are making them crooked. You're crooked. <laughs> I'll just tilt my head. <laughs> Jackie will be tilting her head for the remainder of the episode. I think it's her. I think it is your headphones. Yeah. Every time I take it behind my headphone, it pops out. And I just have to tell you that normally I wouldn't like call that out while we're recording. I would have done it ahead of time, but I just noticed a, but then B, since you're such like a fashion fashionista now, like all fancy with your cool hair. Yep. To like call it out and be like, listen, Missy. Get it together. We're going to change careers as fashion model. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I have a couple of topics for today I would like to discuss. Yes. Number one, it is February 1st. We are recording this on February 1st. You all won't hear it until like the 7th, I think. So, but um, would love to know, Jackie, what are you looking for from organizations this Black History Month? I don't know what all organizations are. I just feel like, but I can tell you. No, what like, are you looking for from organizations? What would what would make you feel like, yep, they get it? I don't know if there's anything they would make me feel like, it's like, yep, you get it. But yeah. I do think it is important just recognizing success. I feel like there is a, it's really important of understanding how people have contributed. Because a lot of times these things, I, I love used to love Tom Joyner's like little known black history fact. Yes. That he used to do every day. I, there are lots of things that are coming out of that. And so I think it's time to celebrate people and know what the contributions that might've gotten left out as much as possible, especially within the industries. Cause it's in, in every industry, whatever industry you're in, you can find people. It is, it is fascinating to see the contributions. And I think, We've seen some things in Hollywood in recent years to like show off or showcase some of those folks that have been lost through history, but there are so many, and to your point, there are so many cool inventions and in different things. You're like, wait, what? Like how, that's awesome. Um, but I also, for me, I think it's the, how are they actually showing up from a numbers perspective? And how are they, like, I I don't honestly, I won't say I don't care. Like, I don't want so much the, oh, here, let's put some Black people on a wall and tell us, oh, there's, you know, oh, there's MLK. Oh, there's, you know, whoever, whoever that most folks know. I like that what you're saying of, like, the mo more unknown. Right. But I also more of, like, no, what are you actually doing to work on, promoting folks that are in, you know, less, uh, less impactful roles or, or lower level roles. What are you doing to help them and like kick off a mentorship program or a um, sponsor program, something along those lines? Like I want some action, not just some talk. Yeah, but I don't want that just for Black History Month. But that should be well, the beginning of the conversation. I would hate for someone to be like, only in February. No, <laughs> one hundred percent agree. But I think it's the like high, like the highlight that you're talking about of like unknown. I also would like them to highlight people in the company that have done great things yeah. that are people of color. Um, and and I think that's the piece that is also missing is. There are so many folks that have been with companies forever and ever and keep the lights on and are leading great projects and are doing amazing yeah. things and, and, and. So highlighting that would also be amazing. I think that would be cool. It's like, 
oh, this person had the influence on this, or this was the person who owns the patent on this, or, right. you know, making those things. Because it, like, to, I mean, tomorrow, today is history. Tomorrow. Like, yeah. it doesn't have to be all, you don't have to go that far to find the, the history of what we, what we find significant. And recognizing the contributions, I think that has... I would love that, especially at those organizations that have been around forever, mm -hmm. you know, like your JP Morgan Chases. Yeah, I, well, I'm thinking about even just a few of my clients that I know, like that have manufacturing plants in the South and have a high population of Black people working for them. And they are, you know, 20 years, tenure, 15 years, tenure, all of these things. And again, like, they're keeping the lights on and they've contributed in such a way that it's like, oh, you know that thing we do in this process? Oh, that was because of Jackie. That was because mm -hmm. of whoever. So I also like, I think it's just acknowledging the hard work and the the impact that folks have made. That's my yeah. my two cents on the matter. I think that was a nickel. That wasn't a nickel to okay. a dime. Okay, okay, that's fair. I am feeling generous today, I guess. <laughs> Um, what else? What else, Jackie, from a Black History Month? Because we're not going to dwell on this too much because we know I know we've talked about this before. Um, and it's just do stuff, people. I think it's taking these things like like as you're looking at these celebrations, making sure that you're look at all of the multi dimensionals of like people of how people show up. It's like more than your blackness and so I think people get caught up like what am I supposed to do but you, there are still lots of other when you look at the intersectionality of people like it is it is recognizing within various spaces as people are doing their research of making them known I don't want to like it, it's kind of like when we talk about pride that's where I get caught up where it's like I want to make sure that people know that it exists and giving people resources and telling people where to go uh, and also inviting people to share the things that they've looked and learned and encouraging people um, to do that work and and allowing people to share things that they maybe they saw a movie or read an article or went to a museum. It's important to share that information too and do it on a regular basis. It could be as easy as your own departments or as you go you know company-wide meetings um and i think that so many people are like what are we supposed to do what are we supposed to do but there's something going on every month and I, the the point of these things are to bring awareness and so make sure that as you're doing this that you don't lose track this is not about coming up with a new logo or saying yay black people Agreed. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Next topic I would like to discuss at this juncture. We are yeah. at the time of year that folks are planning their annual performance reviews. And um, obviously, I know Textio has a, 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 a dog in this fight, if you will. Um, <laughs> and, and so uh, I will... Uh, we can call that out that uh, obviously you might have some bias in how to focus yeah. on bias in annual performance reviews. They're, they're technically a sponsor under duress, right? There you, like... go. there you go. Yes, there you go. So I, I think it's good, like, just to remind folks. So, you know, when you are doing performance reviews, and you are training your leaders, even training your employees on how they put together their reviews. Um, I can tell you, I've had more than one manager on many different occasions say to me things like, oh, I just copied and pasted what I wrote oh, in gosh. the review, uh, which is not great. But being aware of the language that you're using and how you're describing different people on the team, and are you using the same lens for folks, and I don't mean the same lens as in deliverables, because you might have folks at different levels doing different work, focused on different things, but being very thoughtful, like I, 
have had the fortune to work with the Clayman Institute, which is not called the Clayman Institute anymore out of Stanford. And they did a review of all of our performance reviews and the language that was used by leaders. And it, you know, goes back to the same thing that we've been talking about for years and years of women, people of color are described in ways that are very much uh, not as positive. Whereas, uh, you know, for, and this is again, not to ding white men, but white men, it's normally, they're very assertive. They are a go-getter, all of these things where for women and for people of color, it's, oh, they're aggressive. They're, you know, the angry black woman. They're the, um, oh, they don't get along with anyone, that type of thing. And so there's that like bias of, are are the ways that we're looking at talent the same, to, uh, regardless of who the person is? Let's start with this. Go. Have you updated a job description? Like, <laughs> do you know what the person was hired to do? Did you hire right. those? What was the premise that this person was hired in the first place? I think right. it's fascinating how people tell people that they don't do a good job and yet don't know the job that they're supposed to do in the first place. <laughs> like, start with the job description. Is it updated? Is the person been made aware of any changes? Right. Are there any gaps that this person might need to look at within the next year? Because you can't do it last year because you want to have an updated job description. This is where we're high. This is where you came from. This is where you're going. So I want to suggest first, before you even start, make sure you understand who the people are in your department, their job titles and the job description if, that they were hired under. HR, depending on the size of the company, is going to be really mad at you when you say, hey, can you print off a copy of the job description? But so be it. They have access of when the person was hired. We know the hiring dates because, unfortunately, if you look across, look across five years and you have five people, one person hired each year, they might have all been hired at a different job description, yet mm -hmm. get the same rate of pay or even worse. It is increased substantially, but they have the same titles. Like, save yourself some grief. Yeah. Start with that. Right. You know, and going through so that when you give, use the job description as a reference point for the feedback that you're giving in reference. And that will help you in advance before you make some major mistakes and going in and saying, like, uh, you know, giving somebody a bad review if you're facing it, basing it on the job description and just make sure that that doesn't have the bias language in there in the first place so that you're giving a reference to the activity. You're you're judging their activity and not them personally. If you can remember that, that is like 50 percent. I'm going to take a step further, Jackie. Get rid of job descriptions and have job leveling guides. And oh. Um, and that way you can actually uh, look at it from the perspective of, hey, um, a, it doesn't change as much, but you can look at it from a level one, level two, level three, level four, depending on where you place that person. I hate, and I do mean hate. That's I'm not, a very big word you're using. It's a very big word. And I normally wouldn't say that, but I do hate the whole concept of job descriptions because working at HR for as long as I have, I will tell you the amount of times that they change. Um, That's right. It just, it's bananas. The moment that you press publish, it's wrong. Right. Um, and so I think that's for me, the, the piece that I always come back to. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know. I, but you can't have nothing. Right. No, no, like, no. Yeah. Make sure, like these yeah. things. And the thing is, is that once you have it, like I set the standard, this is not for hiring managers. This is this information is going back to HR first because yeah. you have to have one or the other, whatever system you have, as long as it's been implemented as a policy, don't leave hiring managers to their own devices. It's a little thing I like to call save people from themselves because yeah. Nobody's doing these job, you know, performance reviews when they're writing them. It's not at 10 o'clock after a cup of coffee, like on a Tuesday. No. They're like 1130 Sunday night. They're doing them tomorrow and they just get worse and worse and worse to the point where like the last one is saying 
stay cool. <laughs> like, right. How are they doing? Great. What do they need to change? Super, Nothing. Super what great. advice do you have for the next year? Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Right. And, and I, I, we've, again, I, I know you know this, we've all seen those exact reviews when it is like, come on, like you can do better. But um, I also think it is hard to remember. And, it, you know, and so it's just good to have these reminders every single year when you're training your leaders on how to do their reviews having that piece in place where you look at how can bias come into play? What are the types of bias that might come into play as they're evaluating folks? Cause it's also the other piece to this can't be comparing Jackie to Katie. If just because they have the same job, you should be using the job description or leveling guide or whatever, not how does Jackie compare to Katie? Cause that's, yeah, that's not fair. The yeah. bias that people don't recognize that go in and you see this all the time where it's like, Oh, this person works so much or so hard. Yep. The bias where it comes in. And I think this is important for people to know is that that like me, like, Oh, always willing to give up, you know, always ready to travel jumps into all these things. I don't have young children, right? I don't have right. any, reason I don't have anything pressing at this point where I can't go do what I need to do. And so when you do that, that means you're almost penalizing people who do have children. That's where the bias comes in. And then when you reward that, regardless of what your policy is, that's where the belonging piece goes into play, where people don't feel like they belong or they're not being included. Um, and I don't know, we should talk more about how bias does show up in performance reviews, because I think People don't recognize, oh, I'm not supposed to reward people for doing a hard job. Yeah. No, that's that's not exactly what I'm saying. I'm right. saying compare them to the job description and do yourself a favor. Don't allow people to like overwork themselves and throw themselves into a tizzy in the understanding that we are basing it based on how hard or how much someone works. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's... Uh... That is another piece to this. That's like, um, how, how, like, how do we look at rewards? How do we look at the way people um, perform in these different positions? But also, how are we looking at apples to apples? And by that, I mean truly looking at it compared to what their job is. So yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, what else on like when we think about the performance review what are other good reminders that you can think of i think the personality feedback and so the way that that shows up is you might say oh uh, you don't contribute enough and you're talking about the way that somebody maybe they don't want to talk as right. much because right. somebody is introverted or they might culturally feel like they're not in a place or they have not had a history of, of showing up. Um, and so we're being unfair to those particular people because that's not the job, you know, or it's like, oh, I want you to like, I, I, I know I, I promote and, and support people who do remote work. I've worked at, from home for so long. But I hate this whole, oh, you have to be on camera. You have to be, you know, you don't come up. I don't, I want to see your face more. Like, stop. Yeah. Let's look at the actual work based on what the assignments are. Right. And why does it matter? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, what else would I say? What else? What else? I've had leaders in the past who have like had a, a day that they basically like no meetings allowed and you just focus on writing your reviews. Yes. And they give one to the employee for a self-assessment day and then another. Um, what I'll also t tell employees is keep a brag book or a brag file, whatever you want to call it, of kudos that you've received from partners, from managers, from whomever. And also any projects like throughout the year, keep that kind of list together of what you've worked on and what you've accomplished so that you remember 
when you do sit down to write your review in January, what did I do last February? What did right. I do last March? Because I, I don't know about you, but I can't remember what I had for dinner last night. So I'm not sure I could remember what did I work on in January that's great today. Yes, absolutely. That is absolutely uh, a good thing to do and make sure that you have that for yourself or keep those things for your employees because they might have those Slack messages and keep a file for all the people that report to you. If you're in management, keep one for yourself. It's also yeah. good to read in, when you're having a bad day. It's just nice to go one, over there. Yes, 1 million percent. I agree with you wholeheartedly is that on those days when you're like, I just can't do this anymore, having those is a very nice thing to have. Yes, um, it's good. Um, okay, what... I'm going to jump on you. You have to pay. You're not, you're not I'm here. Trying to, I'm, I'm actually, I am, I'm trying to think how I want to approach this next topic. So what are the hot topics? What are the things that are on your mind right now today around DEI? Just how we should look at it and putting those things together. I mean, I think there are four, like that's three different letters <laughs> and um, we've put them all together and they don't always, they don't work at the same pace or at the same time. And people in departments are at different levels, you know, yep. it's like health and fitness. Yeah. Like th those are two different things that we slap together and expect them to always go in there. And you're like, oh, I thought you were health and fitness, but you're eating pizza. And you're like, oh yeah, well, I'm running today or something like you 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 can't just lump everything all together so that is what's on my mind is how do we show up and make people feel clear about what the work is i mean it's almost like dei could just be employee experience a hundred percent. I like I that's I that's why I think both you and I go from that inclusion first approach where it, it is like what is the experience someone has when they are sourced as an applicant for a job? What's their experience when they come in for the interview process? What's their experience when they're onboarded? What's their experience with development, with all these things? And I think if you always are looking at that from an inclusion first lens. Yeah, I mean, my, my whole thing and what I have been known to say is that if you aren't, if you're using systems that were not intentional, that everyone feel included, then someone is being excluded. Yeah. And, you know, you can say who it's like, I don't know, because we have to look at where these policies came from and take it from very beginning to end. And so you have to audit all of these different spaces to know where you need to be. And and the. The diversity part is the easy part. It is now that you, we have all of these different people and it's everybody who's in your space today, how are we making people feel like they can feel safe and get the work done that's, that, that, is, that needs to be done? And so it's like, how are we including and how are people showing up? And so it just takes making sure like we're doing this with intention. And so these are the other people that these are, this is how this benefits. I think I think about sidewalks. We, we've talked about it so many times about, you know, first it came like, oh, we need people with wheelchairs so they can go take all these sidewalks. And then we see people with strollers, kids with bikes, you know, people who are older, all of these different groups of people that are benefiting. The intention is was maybe it came from one direction, but everyone can benefit from that. And so it's looking at it from multiple lenses is what the most important thing is, because the point is to not have anyone feel excluded. Yeah. And I think that's like, it's an unintentional, like that, you yeah. know, that example, it's an unintentional positive situation, but it's looking at it from that angle and from the other angle of by doing this thing, whatever this thing is, what are you also taking away from another group or from another person or whatever? So it's also looking at inclusion from like those different, I'm going to say groups, which is not, but personas. Like, well, no. So it's funny that you're bringing that up because we were, I was having a conversation about personas and, you know, marketing and sales always like to have those personas as we know, mm -hmm. but a lot of times it does 
put a not so inclusive uh, bent on products and you leave people by the sidelines that maybe you're not going to then sell to or not focus on and you lose money. Or they do that on purpose. Um, they, yeah, another. Because there's that too. Also possible. But yeah. I do think like, it's funny, a little fun fact. Back in the day, I used to sell Tupperware and it was really funny how like, we were practicing selling bowls. I'll never forget this example. And the like head, like Miss Tupperware USA was like, all I remember, I, I fancy that. I don't remember all of it. And then all of a sudden she goes like, it's a Barbie pool. And I was like, what? Like everybody, they were like, the whole exercise was like, how many ways can you sell this bowl? Right. And people are like, oh, it's a salad bowl. It's a fruit bowl. It's a bowl for chili. It's a bowl for stew. You know, it, it's a jello mold. And then finally yeah. it was like, it's a Barbie pool. And you're like, what are you talking about? But you do have to look at like, okay, what do we need? What is the system that needs changing? That seems like there's a little rigidity that somebody could be left out. Let's look at some of the possible changes and how is that going to impact various groups? I think a personal example that I like to use is within Textio of giving the interview questions in advance. So the thought process was so that people that are neurodiverse can show up better prepared, but it also helps introverts that be better prepared. It helps people when it's their first job, it levels the playing field so people can do yeah. their research and show up as their best person. You know, it gives people a chance to practice and it allows us to get more from them. We can dig in a little deeper because they've had a lot, you know, like there's all of these benefits Yes. Um, we're hiring faster. It's we can look more at the skills, do skills based hiring, all of these things. And so I think it's important that everyone look at like, again, the policy is we want to make this as, as inclusive as possible. Take it from beginning to end and look at the different places where you can make the experience more equitable among different groups. Um, that is something that you have to do on a regular basis. And people feel better knowing that somebody is doing that work. Amen. And I, uh, having someone focused on it, but also everyone should be thinking about it. But, but yeah, to your point, like, I don't, I mean, you know, this, like there's so many times when it's it, even the most, uh, kind of basic things. Hey, we're having a town hall. Okay, well, let's make sure it's not all men speaking. Hey, we're, whatever, however we're showing up, like making sure that everyone, not everyone, like that there is diversity showing up in different places so people can see that diversity and know. And is anyone going to go, oh, you guys were very intentional with who presented because you wanted to make sure there was diversity. They're going to go, oh, it's great that we got to see two or three or however many people that weren't the same people every single time. So right. I think that's the piece for me that also like kind of comes to mind. So 1 million percent. I think it's important to get different perspectives of, of knowing because you don't know who's going to align. Right. Um, or what's going to resonate. It is, you know, it's just like in the ways and methods that people will have different approaches. I have different types of slides, different, if they use them, different methods and different tone. Um, and it's just important that you, in order to make sure that everyone has a part of it, you want to do it in multiple ways and multiple voices. That makes sense. Yeah. Some of the stuff is just not, it's just not that difficult and people want to make it more difficult than it is. Well, I, that, so that actually brings me to another point where, you and I've talked about this multiple times, and I think it's just a good reminder as well at this time of year when you are gearing up for different months that are, you know, history, history months or how do we do this the right way, that type of thing. There are so many things that you can do for free within your organization, but then there's other things that you should be spending money on. So having a speaker come in for a Black History Month, you should spend money on that having you know taking the time to go how are we showing up here 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 is totally free and it's just a matter of like what are you actually the choices that you're making and how are you creating a space where people can feel included and feel a part of the the company in a different way yeah yeah what else you got jackie what's on your mind i know i just like have been driving the topics but what else you got 
No, I mean, that's really where I'm at. And how are we showing up and looking at how we can where the work doesn't end regardless of like how people look at DEI work. It's not like you're not going to have people from diverse backgrounds. Right. That's impossible. Right. You're not going to not have people that things are not fair or equitable. That's not possible. And you're not going to need, it's not, you're never going to be in a place where you don't need to include everyone or where people feel good about being included. So there has to be ways of getting the work done. And that's why I was like, we're looking at a full employee experience. That's the part that's really on, on my, on my mind about how people are are doing that and we have to see how what is going to happen as a result of people going in with that like you know we have different frames of reference and and no one's being clear of what that is of the definition of what what makes people feel like this is like what, what are people afraid of when it comes to DEI what exactly are, do you think is going to happen by having a fair, equitable job process? Help make it make sense for me. Yeah. You know? I, that, I think that's a piece that I am baffled by right now with so many of these things that we're hearing kind of with the politicians and whatnot of like, oh, like Elon Musk, DEI must die. And you're like, then you don't know what it is like that then you you actually would fall into a category of folks that is that we would want to protect or that we would want to provide a safe space for the fact that you don't understand that is baffling to me but you know the um the fact that he is wanting to kill off and all of these people are wanting to kill off DEI you're like what your question is right. Like, what are you afraid of? What is going to happen that you are so concerned about? Because guess what? It's not. Yeah. I don't think it it makes sense. It's like, I need to, I think it needs to be more specific on what, like, what are you trying to say? What is it? What are you afraid of? Right. I don't know. Because I don't, I think that, you have people that are are banning if you're banning programs what program are you banning right and, and again and why right what is the benefit you're asking the wrong person i don't know again i don't know like, i'm not what's sure being I'm... banned i really don't i don't know it's like maybe we should ask people on what like have somebody come in and say what they're afraid of because I don't know what the answer is. Right. They're afraid of a lot of things. Not as afraid as I am. Like I can guarantee that you want to ban equity and inclusion. Then like, if you just hate black people just say it. Right. You know, just say like, it. just say it. And and we'll be okay with it. I mean, we won't, we won't be okay with it, but we will pretend to be okay with it and slowly but surely fix it. Yeah. And I think those are the things that we really have to look at of, of what people are trying to do. And I think that there's going to be a problem and, and, you know, it's a lot. I know. So I can't really talk on it. It's just too sensitive to have a conversation. I mean, you're asking the wrong person. I should be asking you, what is it? No, I don't want to be Because it gets back to, you have to. I don't want to answer any questions today. I have decided I'm I'm vetoing questions for today. (laughs) No, no, you can't do it. It is important because I, Uh, yes, you know, like, I, it's one of those things where I have to be able to look into it. 
because mm -hmm. you can ban a program to make yourself feel better. I'm going to be a black woman still after you do that. Right. No matter so what. What are my protections? None. Right. Is that what you're saying? Like I should not feel safe? No, I need you to feel safe. Well, I don't. And so there's nothing I can do about it. And that's how I have to show up in the world. And now you're going to say I'm an angry black woman. So it doesn't matter. So you can't win. So, you know, it's like the edge of giving up. Don't be on the edge of giving up, Jackie. There's nothing, if there's nothing there, there's no point. But there, I don't, I don't like this, Jackie. I, I need some positivity to. You can have some, I can't. I still have to show up in the world. And I, it's just the reality of it. Yeah. So it's like the have to, because we have to have the conversation. That's the conversation that has to be had of how do you show up? How are you saving your employees? Or are you just saying that you don't care? And you're going to follow everything else. Like I'm not, I don't really cower to bullies, but other people will. Right. So it just goes back to the where, and, and this is what's happened historically over and over and over again. You might not know that if you're like an American in the United States, but there's like a history of it. And that's the other reason that, you know, you should look at that while you're going through your black history of understanding that what is happening right now, it's, it's time for things like that to happen right now. As soon as they feel like the power is unshifted, like, oh, you know, I might, there, my, I'm a threat, so it's just better to affect black and brown people instead. But I mm -hmm. have to live in that world. Right. So, you know, it's one of those things where I have to make a determination of, of where to go, or where to feel safe, and how to show up. You just because no to one's going to protect me. I will protect you, always. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. I I always I always protect you. That's my job. Um, and I, Phoebe, because you know. Yes, that's very true. I do like the, to do that as well. Yes. Um, I think the other piece that I would say is the we're at the point now where we can't like it, like kind of to your point where we can no longer just say, "Oh, hey, we're going to do something about this." but then not really do anything about it. Um, and that's the part that I think people are also missing is, no, but what are you actually doing? Right. Well, know. nobody's gonna do anything because they're too afraid. I'm not afraid. I know you're not, but you know, it's like how there are enough people that are, and uh, that's what's gonna, you know, be important of figuring out how we do those things, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oh. so I think those things are there. And so it's, we really have to figure out what we can do for employee experiences because all of this is going to happen and come back. Um, and I think those oh. things are going to be important. Yeah. And we just have to keep plugging along was the other one I would say, because I think that's the other piece that I feel like we're at this point of exhaustion about everything. And we have to keep pushing. And someone does. Someone does. Not you. Someone does. Well, I mean, I some, just in general, it's like we somebody's going to have to figure out figure out those things and it's like I don't know who it's going to be but it has to be more than one person right it does and that's the the kicker where people are going to be looking to people like us of like how can I do that and the answer is figure it out um the answer is let's talk about it Let, let's continue talking about it I think because I, yeah. that's the other piece. I don't think there's a one an, one and done answer, as you know, as we all know. 
Um, no, there's not. And that's un- I mean, and everybody's at different levels, and their companies are at different spots. Yeah, and the impact is different. yeah. Penny would like to say hello. Oh, oh, by jumping on top of my tummy. Um, I love you. Yes, I love you. Okay. Um, y'all can't see this if you're just listening, but Katie just got mauled by a dog. <laughs> it's, got, it's true love. She loves me. She loves me the most. Um, all right. So, Jackie, what are you looking forward to this week? What's coming up for you? What's exciting? Well, I'm going to go running on Saturday. I actually ran this past week. I'm kind of excited about it. It was actually kind of fun. The weather has been lovely here. So um, I've been spending time outside. It has to be coming. It has to be coming your way because I've got overcast, nasty. <laughs> Sending it to you. It can't stay here. Um, I'm sick of it. Um, good. You have like anything that. exciting planned? I, I mean, I'm waiting for Galentine's. I'm excited about Galentine's. Do you want me to tell you what's exciting? So this weekend, I'm going to actually go to a, a play or an actual musical, uh, Jagged Little Pill at Gamage. Oh. Uh, it's a, you know, a musical based on Alanis Morissette. Alanis Morissette. And one of my girlfriends invited me. And then uh, we're we're going to do a Galentine's book club for the, the book club that I'm in. Um, and uh, it's a, a book that I would highly recommend to anyone that is a book lover. It's the, the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, if you haven't read it, it's very interesting. And I won't say more than that because I don't want to ruin it for anyone that will go read that. Um, and also I have been able to work out again. So much like you, I won't be running because if I fall when I run right now, I'm not dealing with worse issues with my elbow, but I am back to at least riding a bike and, and that type, or, you know, a stationary bike at the gym, um, and walking the dogs. But I, I will be staying off the mountain for a while still until my elbow is completely healed. So, yes. Well, at least we're both getting some of that activity. I'm sorry that it's overcast, but I know it'll change. Yeah, I'm sure it will be sunny within the next like hour or two, because that's just how it works here in Arizona. But all right, my friend. Um, we love you all that are listening. We miss you all if we haven't seen you in a while. Um, and also, I would like to just extend, I know we have some friends recently who have um, unfortunately been impacted by reductions in force um, across multiple organizations. And um, I'm just, I, I'll speak for myself and uh, I'm sure Jackie feels the same though, that uh, we're here if you need to talk, if you need to cry, if you need to laugh, uh, we're here um, and we'll send any leads your way that we hear about. So um, do reach out to us if you are looking for resources or if you're uh, looking for a shoulder. Um, We appreciate you. This is Katie Van Horn. And this is Jackie Clayton. Bye.